Hi, everybody. I'm Julian Armour. I'm the Artistic Director of Music and Beyond, and I'm delighted to, to be chatting with Carol Kabalik, the cellist of the Arava Quartet, the Arava String Quartet. Uh, and they're a very, very exciting string quartet. Uh, one, one paper called them the future of Australian chamber music, and they've just been, become the first Australian group to sign a contract with Deutsche Grammophon and Universal, which is very, very exciting. And they're coming for two concerts uh, at Music and Beyond, on the 5th of July and the 6th of July, uh, both in air-conditioned venues. So even if they bring their Australian heat with them, everybody's going to be <laughs> relaxing in nice, cool temperatures, and their instruments will be happy. Uh, but thank you for taking the time to, to speak with us. No, thank you for having me. Carol, can you give us a bit of background on the history of the Arava Quartet? I gather you were formed in 2007, but I'd love to hear more about how you got together and what you've done so far. Uh, well, uh, I suppose it's... Uh... It consists of um, the first violinist is actually, in fact, my brother. Um, so we've been playing together. We've been playing string quartets together since we were children. Uh, we started out as a, you know, in a musical family. Uh, my my father is is a violist, and uh, my two eldest siblings pl play violin. Uh, so kind of to complete the family quartet, I was I suppose destined. <laughs> to play the cello. Um, so I suppose that's kind of the first times I was playing, uh, you know, string quartets. And then it kind of, eventually my dad said, you know, once I start university, uh, let's fi find a violist that's your, your age and kind of same goals and see where you take it. And then eventually David joined, uh, David replaced my elder sister and, um, yeah, I think we we just started out, you know, we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. Uh, we just thought, you know, there's some great music. Uh, we'll just, you know, have fun with it. And then I think about a year later, we, you know, once we, we were in the Banff Centre actually in, in 2008. And then from that moment on, I think things started to get a little bit serious and then now, yeah, we've recently recorded our debut album with Deutsche Grammophon, which is a huge honour, and we're very excited and and proud of this recording, and can't wait to come to Canada and and and, and share this music with with audiences. Well, let's talk about the CD in a, in, a, in a minute. It sounds fabulous, so I'm delighted. I'd love to hear more about it. But let's back it up even. Tell me about the name Arava. Where did that come from? So uh, it's actually a. Um, my, my brother and I are of uh, Polish heritage, and uh, we grew up with a piece by a Polish composer, Wojciech Kilar, uh, and he wrote this piece called Orava. Uh, it's a region in, in southern Poland or on the border, or, uh, also Slovakia. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's just a work that we grew up with and have a very special connection. The Polish spelling is a little bit different with with a w like my surname but we right. we change it to a v just because you know after so many years of people saying koalik instead of kavalik we I, I knew what i'd get myself into but um but yeah anyway yeah it's a great piece uh and yeah that's what we named the quartet after exciting have you been to play in poland since you formed as a quartet uh, no, it's, it's on the cards. No, not as a quartet. Yeah, we haven't played as a quartet there, but um, yeah, hope, hopefully soon. Great. Well, tell us a little bit about the whole process of forming the, the quartet, uh, making the decision, and then moving ahead uh, to make it a full-time commitment. Because we all know how tough it is to really, you know, in, in today's music world and also with a string quartet and to make that commitment. And I always think if you've got four people that are good enough to play at a high level in a string quartet, they could be earning a fortune as concert masters of different orchestras. So, so it's a real sacrifice, isn't it? Tell me a little bit about uh, about your whole uh, experience in forming this quartet and building it to where it is now. Uh, well, the first thing is, I suppose, I play with my brother, so that makes makes things a little easier or more difficult. So, um, you know, people always just, you know, if I if we shout each other, it's okay. I mean, we, we know we're, we're still brothers. So that, that, that's one aspect that makes things a little bit easier, but in all seriousness, I think, uh, you know, you need to find, uh, four people that, um, have similar goals and uh, are striving, uh, for the one thing. And as you know, we've been together for 
over 10 years now and kind of, you know, people's situation changes, change, um, and you just have to kind of constantly adapt and reassess kind of your goals. Um, uh, that's, that's one thing. And I think, you know, the other thing is, you know, having respect, uh, for each other, but I think also just enjoying enjoying the process uh, i think you know we have to enjoy you know not only performing but uh, the rehearsing uh you know we're still there's so much to dive into this music you know you can play the same music for you know you can always come back to a piece and just uh you, you find like just more things in the music and i suppose that's what that's what keeps this keeps playing in a string quartet um so exciting and you know, you said, you know, playing in orchestra, you know, the, when you're playing in a quartet, it's um, kind of a double-edged sword, right? Because it's, uh, you know, you're in, you're in so much control. It's, you know, there's four people. It's just, you know, you're completely, you know, we're playing hide and the other, rehearsing the hide and the other day. And we're just thinking, you know, it's just completely naked when you play this music, you know, it's just, uh, it's so so delicate um but that's 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 the joy and, and pleasure of playing music of these delving of these masters these geniuses that wrote this amazing music yeah very very exciting um you know i have four boys so i'm always thrilled at the dynamic of brothers and taking a look at it and we hear <laughs> these stories of quartets all traveling on different flights and certainly i've you know i've presented many of the best quartets we have boarding quartet coming coming this summer and we've had guarneri come and you know most of them and uh it's it's really interesting to see this dynamic because it's so intense isn't it to refine quartet playing to the very highest level that you guys have takes a lot of real, really careful work. How does it work with the sibling situation? Oh, I think it's, uh, you know, my, me and my brother are, are very close. Um, so it, it makes it, uh, I, I, it, I'm, it's very easy, I have to say. Um, and, you know, I think it used to be actually, yeah, actually three, three siblings and a violist to begin with, so I suppose at first, it was probably the most difficult for him when we would suddenly start speaking Polish, just, I don't know, not about him. We just <laughs> randomly, you know, and argue in our native native uh, language. Um, but, you know, my, my teacher used to always joke, you know, when you're finding people to play in a quartet, you know, playing a quartet is a marriage without the privileges. But <laughs> it's always a joke about that. But, no, it definitely is, uh, you know, it is an amazing thing to to place incredible music and yeah. Right. Well, another quartet of siblings that, that, that we've brought in is the Hagen Quartet. More siblings. Do, do you know these yeah. guys at all? Do you know, have you, have you met uh, them? I mean, is it, uh, unfortunately I haven't met them. I, I haven't even seen them play live, uh, but they're, they're, um, I, I don't know if they've come out to Australia, um, but they're an uh, unbelievable quartet. Uh, there's, they're one of our idols, um, you know, especially I was listening to the other day, a Janacek recording of the Hagen. That's one of the greatest recordings of anything. So if you haven't heard that, that's, that's, a, that's a diamond in the rough. Yeah, absolutely exquisite. But you're following in great footsteps because after all, they've done most of their recordings for Deutsche Grammophon and now you guys are, 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 are following in that footsteps. How did the recording come about? Uh, I think uh, a mix, you know, my, my dad is a violist and he would always, uh, you know, his advice always to me saying, it doesn't matter where, where you're playing, if it's, you know, in the, the Sydney Opera House or in, you know, in country, you know, middle of nowhere, um, you know, in the outback, it's you have to always play your best. You never, ever know who's going to be watching. And uh, we were at a, at a festival um, and we played a, a Shostakov string quartet and then uh, just happened to be uh, one of the DG artists was playing, uh, Wolfgang Holzman, the uh, baritone, was playing in the, in the same concert. So DG and the Universal uh, people were just there to, to watch Wolfgang um, and we performed after him and, yeah, just the right place at the right time the you know they kind of 
came up, approached us and scouted us and said, you know, here's our card. And I, I didn't really believe it. I was just like, no, nah, no way. It's not happening. But yeah, here we are. And yeah, it's quite well, you surreal. Well, started with the right label. That's, congratulations. That's very, very exciting. <laughs> and it's a wonderful tradition of, of ab- absolutely fabulous quartets that have recorded for that. Um, tell me about the repertoire. It's all Russian on it. How did, how did you choose the repertoire for this, this particular recording? Um, well, I think, uh, you know, we played, uh, so when, when they originally saw us play, we, had, we played a Shosko string quartet. So that was, um, that, that was something the, the label wanted us to, us to record. Um, and, you know, the Tchaikovsky, you know, it just, uh, I, we, we just love, we just love this piece and, you know, you have to, when choosing the repertoire, you need to, um, I find it a lot more it's a lot more stressful than than choosing for a concert uh, than than for a concert because you just like it's you know well you know once you 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 put it down you put it on on the recording you know there's no going back so um you know it's but the Tchaikovsky was really a, also a work that we felt we had something to say uh, something to to give and also a different kind of outlook and hopefully audiences relate to this and the the um the Rachmaninoff you know this is a this kind of a first unfinished work it was actually just a work that we always you know always had under our fingers for an encore who's a I mentioned before a diamond in the rough and it's and you can see it's really inspired by the Tchaikovsky Andante Cantabile you can see how he yeah, um, you know how he plays with the texture. Um, yeah, I, I, I we love it. Yeah, and a, a beautiful piece of rock and not often played and not often recorded. So I was delighted. To no, see barely. That on it. Yeah, yeah, barely recorded. I, I don't know why, but. <laughs> well, let's talk about what you're playing at Music and Beyond. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the repertoire and and the quartet's approach to it and your views on how to play it. Um, you're doing concerts on the 5th and the 6th. The 6th is at 2 o'clock at First Baptist Church. Again, a reminder to everybody, it's air-conditioned, so it's a, and it's a beautiful acoustic, a very intimate spot. So definitely get there early to anybody watching this. You don't want to be turned away uh, to the show. But uh, the first piece you're playing is the Haydn String Quartet in B minor, Opus 33, number 1. Tell me a little bit about uh, how you guys approach this piece and why you chose it. Um. Well, I think the Opus Thirty Three, uh, the the whole set is uh, we we just find it, you know, it's not it's not really performed so so often. Uh, and I think it's a really fascinating set. Uh, um, um, you know, Haydn wrote in to his to his uh, you know patron is that he wanted to um, compose the well he could that he composed this set in an entirely new and special way. And it even, you know, inspired composers like Mozart. You know, Mozart came out of 10 years of string quartet composing Exile uh, because of these Opus 33 quartets. And I think it's, uh, you know, it's really fresh. Uh, you know, it's when you first listen to it, it's kind of, I hate to kind of give away the punchline, but, you know, he starts, he actually starts in two bars, uh, the violins playing D major and then, kind of a, a disgruntled cellist decides, you know, no, we're two bars in that, no, we're going to B minor. It's this kind of <laughs> trickery that, 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 that Haydn is, it's just so awesome. And it just, it's always, you know, it's so jarring. Maybe, you know, it won't put Twitter into meltdown uh, these days, uh, but I, you know, I encourage people to heckle me. And you know when the, when the when the cellist comes in and it's uh, yeah I mean the audiences it would have completely freaked them out I think and hopefully people freak out a little bit come come July absolutely and the string writing I mean by Haydn I still think it's second to none it's just so exquisite the sonorities it's always such a joy to hear and actually we don't hear Haydn often enough I don't think in 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 any instrumentation yeah it's it's our guilty pleasure. Um, uh, you know, every every year, our New Year's resolution is to maybe we should ease off on the Haydn and 
and do a little bit more other stuff. But you know, it's July. You know, who 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 cares about their their New Year's yeah. resolution by that point anyway? <laughs> it's summer. Well, it's very welcome. Okay, and then and then Shostakovich string quartet number eight, which is on your CD. So that's yep. a piece that's obviously been in your repertoire for a while, has it? So. Yeah, um, it's you know it's um, playing it live and and listening to it live. Um, it's always such an incredibly moving experience. Um, you know, it was written at a time where you know Shostakovich, had, uh, you know, there was the um, bombings in in Dresden, and he was commissioned to write some music for a film and he was so touched uh so taken aback by what had happened so he kind of he frantically wrote this quartet in only a matter of a few days um and it's yeah it has so many interesting interesting aspects you know in the second moment just you can you can feel the the burning of dresden and all the kind of all the jewish melodies too that he even though he wasn't jewish himself um but yeah, it is such a special piece. Yeah, I think any time I've either heard it or played it, people have come back and they've said, you know, no matter how many times I hear this piece, I still am shattered when I hear it. It's so powerful. It's that kind of a piece, isn't it? No, oh, yeah, it really is. But and I think the the most beautiful thing for me is besides um, besides how shattering it is, it's you know the moment where it the cello solo plays in the fourth moment and it's just the, the climax of the work where it's just this beautiful you know there's just still he still manages to find hope um in this music and uh i think that's you know my my parents used to you know they would tell me you know growing up in you know the communist times in in poland that you know you have to you know even you have to find the hope uh, wherever you can, even if it's just eating an orange, which was, you know, such a special thing in, in those days. Um, and yeah, I think that's, I think that's what makes it so special. It's not just this kind of, I mean, it is very deep and dark, but you know, you still have to find, find the beauty, the hope, especially in this, in this day and age. Yeah, very beautiful. Uh, and then, and then the next piece on on the program is Mendelssohn's uh, F minor string quartet, Opus eighty. Um, nice to hear. We don't hear that that often. Tell me, tell me a little bit about why you chose this piece for this program. Beautiful work. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah, Mendelssohn is you know another guilty pleasure. Yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, I think it's it's you see Mendelssohn in a, in a different light. Um, you know, you, people will be familiar with his, you know, his obviously his octet uh, where, you know, youthful uh, Mendelssohn, bubbly, uh, you know, nearly naive and joyful. And, and this one's uh, very different. Uh, he wrote it at a, at a time where a difficult period in his life, it was actually his last major work that he completed before his death. Um, and, but he was in mourning because his, sister who he was very close to fanny had just passed away so he you know he described in letters that his feelings at the time was gray on gray and um you know this is a, this is a requiem for his his sister right well thank you for including it. i'm delighted and then then the, the 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 big hit of the whole two appearances the arava the very piece yeah. named after. Tell us a little bit about that. The composer, the arrangement you're doing. It's a great piece, by the way, everybody. I, I did. I did not know it. I have to say, and I, I did listen to it on YouTube. And I thought, wow, what a fabulous piece. So thank you for including that too. Oh, it's. Oh, well, we're really excited about it. Um, it's. You know, it's. It showcases all the kind of the f Polish folk melodies and the rhythms and trying to capture this this beautiful landscape, um, uh, uh, in the Tatra Mountains. Uh, but it, it's originally written for a uh, four string orchestra in 15 parts. Uh, but you know, there's only four of us, so we're 
playing an arrangement. But you know, we have 16 strings, so right, we're, almost we're there, up. yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> well, you're one ahead of the game. <laughs> <We're one up. laughs> yeah, no, but but it's always a ball, and yeah, it'll be a great way to finish off the program. And yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, we'll be circulating a, a a link to that on one of our e flyers, so people can hear this piece. Definitely, definitely worth hearing. Okay, so the concert before that is the fifth at seven thirty uh, p.m. and we're we're um, actually doing it at, at a really cool venue. You'll love this. It's a it's a church. Um, it's in Sandy Hill, so it's actually only about a block away from my house. Um, and it was a church with gorgeous acoustics. Um, the Achilles' heel of this church is is it was always incredibly hot. Um, and now it's been taken over. It's no longer a church. It's become an event space, and they've made it a really neat place, and there's a bar downstairs, a little bit like St. John's in Smith Square where there's a restaurant and a coffee bar, and the audience can go down. They can come for dinner beforehand. It's air-conditioned, um, so that's on the 5th. Uh, and the first piece uh, we're playing is Ross Edwards, uh, so one of your compatriots, Summer Dances, one, string quartet number three. Tell us a little bit about this piece. I'm sure none of us really know it very well, if at all. Well, I, uh, you know, I, we're very excited to, you know, bring a bit of Australia to Canada. Um, and, you know, I think Ross Edwards, it's, he's inspired by, by, by the Australian bush. Uh, this is, uh, the, the third string quartet is actually inspired by his morning walks. Um, and, you know, it just, captures this this the landscape but also the kind of the insects the 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 birds and um if you haven't been to australia get to this concert because you know it were, it were, we're bringing a part of australia you know to this church so what well, ex church and yeah no it's just, it's, a, it's a really great piece and uh you know he's also inspired by uh by kind of the Asian, some Asian influence, uh, but there's some really funky, funky rhythms, funky textures, and it's it's really unique. It's it's hard to explain. I have to say, it's just just get along to it. It's it's, it's really it's exciting music. So maybe we should just warn everybody: if they come to this concert, they should be prepared to race home to call their travel agents to book a flight to Australia. Then is that what you're saying? Is that the... Oh yeah, oh yeah, for <laughs> for sure, definitely. Okay. Okay. Now, speaking of, we were talking about Shostakovich and World War II. So, one of the great tragedies, Irvin Shulhoff, the Five Pieces. Do you want to talk about that for a few minutes? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, Shulhoff's an amazing composer. That's you know rarely, too rarely performed. Uh, and these five pieces, uh, I mean, uh, it's just it's really amazing music. Uh, you know, he. Starts off with a, a Viennese waltz uh, in four. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, try try dance to it. And then a serenade, which um, will haunt haunt you. I, I don't think it'd be one that Romeo would be singing for Juliet, that's for sure. Um, and then after that, you hear all the, the third movement. The third piece is, is a Czech dance, which he goes to his Czech roots. Um, and then the fourth is a tango, and then he finishes off with a tarantella. Um, but I think he has a has a really interesting language and use of harmony. I would kind of kind of I would say more like Janacek Bartok, but maybe in more of a more accessible way. Um, you know, I, I love Janacek and Bartok, but I know sometimes audiences can be a little bit you know, a little bit, you know, so, sometimes when you hear it for the first time, you know, it, it can be overwhelming that, that you just can switch off a little bit um, and just, you don't know what, what to follow. But I mean, this, this, uh, the, the Schulhoff, the, you know, his Czech language, he was actually, in fact, the first composer to start notating uh, jazz, you know, influences of jazz um, on Schulhoff. And he was actually, a child prodigy and when he was around four years old he was he played for Dvorak uh, and Dvorak encouraged him and gave him a chocolate and yeah he wrote these these five pieces wow early 20th now, century 
Now, for, for, for those of you in the uh, watching this who don't know what a tarantella is, a tarantella is a dance, a frenzy dance you do once you've been bitten by a tarantula spider. Is this the kind of dance you're going to need to do to get rid of that tarantula venom, or what do you, uh, <laughs> whatever it's... <laughs> it, it, it is brutal, this last moment. It's, it, this last piece, it's, it's so much fun. Uh, yeah. Okay, something to look forward to. Great. And then Brahms, Brahms quartets. Uh, again, not played that often, interesting enough, live. Do you play all three of them? Does the quartet play all three of the quartets? You're playing the, the, the A minor quartet uh, on this concert. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, so it's his Opus 51, number two, uh, and, you know, it's Brahms. He's, you know, inspired by by the Hungarian folk, uh, and I think it's, I have to say personally, it's it's my, my favourite quartet of, of, of the three. Um, however, you know, in saying it's number two, it's Brahms was kind of... He was he was intimid maybe he was intimidated by by the genre by by the string quartet genre and he before he published the first two which were in the in the same set the Opus Fifty One he it's apparently he destroyed around twenty string quartets um, twenty drafts and different quartets so you know you're hearing Brahms's twenty second string quartet. Wouldn't it be great to have access to his trash heap and look at all the things oh, he destroyed? He, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, yeah, he, he, he would destroy all his sketches. He just, yeah. um, he was very paranoid like that. He just wanted, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's an amazing work. And yeah, I think, yeah, that's a good program. Said with yeah. Well, yeah. Two, I, two great uh, programs. Yeah. Uh, so we're, yeah. we're talking with, with Carol Kavalik from the Arava Quartet, uh, who are coming on July 5th and 6th to Music and Beyond. Uh, this, this appearance in Canada will be their Canadian debut. Where else are you playing on this on this trip to Canada? Uh, we uh, let me just get it up. Uh, we're playing in um, Montreal. Um, is Quebec in Montreal? I haven't even looked up where we're. Montreal's in Quebec. Yeah, Quebec is close to uh, Ontario. We're close to Ottawa. Um, where are we else are we playing? I've got it written here. Somewhere. Uh, we are playing in, yeah, a festival in Quebec. Uh, uh, I'm not going to try to do my 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 French um, my French uh, pronunciation. Oh no worries. We'll, we'll add it up and talk about it. But 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 it's coming here. <laughs> are you going just to Canada, or are you going to the U.S. too on this trip? Coming just to Canada. Uh, yeah, just just to Canada on this trip. Okay, yeah. great. How long is the flight? Like 25 hours or something? How long is it going to take you to get here? Oh, I think it will take... I think we go to Vancouver first, and that's like 15 or 16 hours. Okay. And, and I think we get... I think we arrive on this about the same time we leave <laughs> with yeah. the time zones. So, what? It's only, what, 20-minute flight, right? Right. Zipping along with the speed of the <laughs> Earth's rotation. Yeah. <laughs> and then three days to get back. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, it's exciting. So um, again, we'll we'll look forward to hearing, seeing everybody, and meeting you guys in person, and having you enjoy our Ottawa summer, which is going to be probably a lot more like Australia than it is now. Um, so, so we're talking with Carol Kavalik from the Arava String Quartet. They're playing in Ottawa at Music and Beyond, July fifth at seven thirty p.m. Uh, at All Saints event space, and then July 6th at 2 o'clock p.m. at First Baptist Church in Ottawa. Both air-conditioned and both fabulous programs and a very, very exciting young string quartet, so don't miss this one, or these two, I would say. Thanks again, Carol. Thanks so much for having me.